Your father steps on board the train of ghosts. You watch him from the platform. Somehow, he doesn't look as old as you expected him to be. You think this must have something to do with the light, or maybe how much bigger the train is. It stretches down the track a long way, as far as your eyes can make out. It's like a black bullet that keeps speeding toward you, you think. And then, no, it's like a very long train, that's all. Somewhere on board the train, your father is choosing a seat. Maybe he's already found one, has settled in, picked up a magazine or newspaper someone else left lying there, is flipping through it idly. Maybe he's looking out the window. For you, you would like to think, waving. Only you'll never see it because of the reflected glare. Or maybe he's not looking for you at all. Maybe he's watching the hot air balloons that have just appeared all over the sky, ribbed like airborne hearts, the giants Jack killed. In the stories, Jack has no father. This would explain a lot, you are thinking, as the train begins to pull away. His misplaced affections, stealing the harp of gold that played all by itself. Around you, Men and women and children are standing on the platform, shouting, waving, hugging themselves. The wind is cold. It must be March. You would want that kind of music if you were Jack, wouldn't you? The automated town is purchasing a compass of afternoons. Look, I'm bored and empty too. What do you want? This room is nothing but racks of clothes. See how easy it is? That one, sides of beef. This one is people for the hanging. That one is religions. See, you didn't call. I thought you were going to call. That one is rows of vegetables. This one is popular music. That room is racks of car parts. And you, not your real name, go out and back. You needed something or something to do. It's your automated corner in this automated town. That one is sex toys and lubricants, because it always comes out happy, because it was the first idea that came to me, where these are the people in my neighborhood. One works on cars. One works at the town transfer station. One runs a distributorship. One builds cabinets. One used to be a sheriff until he had to quit. It was a movie once. The whole town killed someone. The clock read 1010, and we realized we were in an advertisement. I could drive there. It's about two hours away. I could have lunch there and ask the waitress. She could show me the rooms. And this one is rows of foreign students. That one is musical instruments. It's about finding the next thing. It's a room of hibachis. You got off work and you went home. It was almost midnight. It was mid-afternoon. You should ride a bicycle more. You should drink more water and less of everything else. It's a room of people dressed in bright clothes. It's a room of hanging doors, of cell phones and one is ringing, of people having sex, rows of bottles of vodka, rows of sparklers, it could go on like this for some time, so we do. Bugs are flying in and out of the open windows. All the TVs are on. All the TVs are on. A train promises that it will never leave you alone in somebody else's apartment with a sick cat to take care of, and you believe it. You believe the train because you think, deep down, that the train wants to take you somewhere else, which is a confusion of desire and location, trust and vector, but that's okay, because now another train is promising that it will never come to you in the middle of the night as a cold and steady rain. And you believe this too, because it seems unlikely that a hollow sheath of chromium and steel could somehow transform itself into weather. You think this is the train you would like to take, maybe, when suddenly another train steps in and promises that it will be a sort of music for you. 
In another promises, it will be like a contact lens over the eye of your soul. And yet another assures you in all sincerity, it will become a pollen that will never make you sneeze, and from which zinnias will grow. And you believe these trains, all of them, in the same way you believe in ghosts, with their daguerreotypes and ramkins of salt, that keep coming and going, presumably wanting you to do something for them, or maybe go with them, though believing in them doesn't really change anything. The half-light in the plaza, the broken clock on the mantelpiece, the conference invitation, the new etymologies of silence, and the machineries we keep inventing to record them, to tell us just what it is we're not hearing, to keep us where we already are. Because what is expected is only as beautiful as expectation allows. Because it only works as possibility. A trace of innocence that can only come near futility. And futility is the only explanation. The error of all things done or not done. Things that are coming to their moment. The ship in flames. The final flames nearing where all trace of the future is written as something other something unplanned, but continually unfolding, the carnage of the face slowly turning into a child's face, the beauty of the face rising into its own impossible moment, the holding no one holds, the realization there is nothing more to do, the almost question that is the end, the calendar uncoiling in a moment past the moment. We stand at the leading edge of the continent, we pay good money. We help roll out the carpet. We bring our photographs, our songs, the fight and the show. Because we are expected and plain, the sum of our flaws that we fall into is one hesitation, one crumbling knowledge of things standing and falling before us and after that hover. The scroll telling who and what by seconds. The city becomes the shadow of the city. What did we say then? Who were our desires? Because you can stand or sit or lie down. The plan of the movement, the moment. We could make a killing. We could ride this out. Because we are only going long before we're gone. And this wind every year, this picture. There's no moment to decide. There's no plan, no song. There's no retreat for beauty. I can't go any farther, as there is no farther to go. There's no going. Because if you're going to go, you have to go for nothing. And nothing rises. We kept looking for the parkway in the vicinity of the park. But all we kept finding was each other. I mean, more of us. Those who had come here looking for something else or someone else. It was the same in the botanical gardens, at the glider rental stations, around the food courts, by the riprap of the wading pools. There were some thickets we didn't bother to explore, and some dogs that barked at us from a distance. We couldn't see the dogs, but we knew they were there. We made soothing, consoling sounds when we came upon their owners on the gravel paths, leashes held limply, almost gently in their pale hands. It was the sort of loss we could relate to, or rather, a certain familiar idea about loss. Don't blame yourself, we told everyone we ran into. It could happen to anyone. Pain can warn us of danger, and pain is bureaucratic, where we find ourselves along the Stockholm archipelago, saying, thanks for taking care of me, and thanks for giving me food, and then some other name for it, like elections, or waiting for elections. We called, but it just went to your voicemail. We were worried as you were talking about money, and we said you'll have money again sometime later, but we weren't sure, really. And perhaps you heard it in our tone. 
so there's a concept, and then a town to fill it. Everyone gets hurt or dies, and then is better right away. Things daughter along, and sometimes memorably. We like that. And why not want that again? You know what happens when one tries to replicate the past. Yes. But what if one tries to replicate something that didn't work out all that well? That maybe this completes it. Like that time we pretended downtown Denver was in Paris, and we could break up over some wine and mixed blessings. And in this story, there are no characters, which is first a word and then people thinking, calling it the dubious age. There are no dogs out there barking, you realize. And then you think, I'm going to be reasonable for the rest of the afternoon. I'm going to cover my cough and clean my hands for more than 20 seconds. When we were happiest, we did such things. And we'll be happy again against the backdrop of the mountains, ordering wine. Over the side of each new action is taped a note informing us of its meaning. We're certain of it. And so we keep the notes in neat piles, hoping next week or so to find someone who can read that language and save us from the extravagant nature of our guessing. It got us through the city, though, past the evidentiary and revolution, past the museum displays of the kitchens of the future, lemony fresh. The signs all said, happy people frighten us, and are you a good witch or a bad witch? You said this one thing to your father, and then fathers were done, and you had to pick up his clothes and do something with them. And what are the ones that were nice, that you wouldn't mind wearing? It's easy. Just call it a project. Count the museums by twos. Already, it starts to feel uncomfortably similar to the last project, like any day of the year with typical weather. You begin to feel so defeated. I'll board up the house. Take down the book. It's getting near the last page. We're going to have to turn back or give up soon. It was a good year for the roses, even so. As outside of each new action is taped another action. We left the city to visit your mother, your father. They look at you the way children do, because you can't help them and you kept telling them you always would.